happy. It's a black coral. It's a black coral, yeah. No, wait, is that true? No. That's bamboo. The one in front of it is Umbelopathies, the black coral. This one? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Oh, jeez. I think that they're best buds. I think so, too. <laughs> you can just tell. Yeah. It's like a good hug. Is that a brittle stalk? Mm-hmm. I know that it seems weird, but I think a starfish would be, if it if it was like the size of a dog, would be an excellent pet. <laughs> what? Be like a huge snuggler, you know, like wrap yeah. around you and... But like you'd have it, to be in the water. It would need to be furry as well. <laughs> but if we could somehow bring what? dogs and... We were having such a together. nice watch, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> you know, wow, look at that shot with the black dot. That is oh, so that is a beautiful sick shot. shot. Oh my God, Dave. Okay, it. Dave. <laughs> He's like, oh, it's nothing. Freestyling. No, it's all Bob. Dave. That is. That's a cool shot. It's all Bob. It's all for the wiggle. The Collaboration. Yeah. It's got a lot of wiggle. We'll hey, we'll fix that in post. <laughs> stabilize. If I think if I just say it, it stabilize. Stabilize. <laughs> Chat Dance. says. Starfish are vicious, brutal predators. <laughs> Imagine trying to These snuggle. These ones would be nice, I think. Yeah? I'll try to snuggle sea star and yeah. just trying to, like, nibble on yeah. your skin. No more wiggle. <laughs> I wouldn't mind. Wiggle free. Really? Yeah. <laughs> well done. I think people who like having snake as pets would like sea stars. Oh, well. yeah. Oh, my gosh. I didn't even ah. think of snakes. Not not the thing I want to cuddle with. I need a, I need a furry <laughs> kind of... Cuddler. What if a snake why, had why not fur? Why just stick to a dog? A yeah. fur snake? Nice puppy. A fur dog. snake with the cute eyes. <laughs> yeah, the, the lack of eyes might be a little disconcerting. <laughs> you could put googly eyes on it. Oh, that's yeah. true. You can. Don't look away from me. Don't look two directions at once. <laughs> That's cool. That's like awesome. each polyp has that like red. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you. That was so beautiful. It's our uh, art project over this here. This is gonna go on our photo album. You making a scrapbook, Annie? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Printing out the photos. <laughs> yeah. Actually, yeah. That's what I did. <laughs> I got them hung up in my locker. <laughs> <laughs> gonna add her to the uh, post-it note art gallery. Actually, the post note art gallery is going in a, a separate album. What yep. if we had a teen beat kind of magazine for corals? Just thinking outside the box. <laughs> <laughs> we need more people like you, Adam. Yeah. The, the, um, what's it called? Idiots. Oh. <laughs> 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 Justin Bieber's fave corals. Yeah. <laughs> no. Bridge, Nav. Get us out of here, Bridge. <laughs> <laughs> For our folks at home, um, if you're just tuning in and you missed our previous dives, Three check out NautilusLive.org. Check out NautilusLive.org for our highlights. We'll be posting more highlights in the week to come. Stay tuned. What's that, Rosselidae? Um, hard to say from right here. I don't think it's a Rosselid. Zoom in, Dave. Euplectelid. Euplectelid. It looks like it might have 
fallen over? Yeah. Cool. It's like something weird happening on the other side there. <laughs> it looks like a uh, bamboo skeleton on the, behind it. Ooh, and the mastus. I'm seeing in the still cam. I think we're good on that one. Yeah, thank you. Can we look at that anthemastus, please? Above the sponge. Oh, actually, oh. can we look at this? I think that's a black coral. Really? Zoom in, Dave. Oh, it's like or something city. taken over by hydroids. Hmm. Yeah. And a little urchin. Okay. Well, not what I thought it was. Zoom out. There's a magnus. So where are we Alice. looking? Right here? Right there. Up forward. Looks like the same one we saw earlier. Yeah. Same. Yeah, this one. Maybe? Looks more like the other anthemastus I've seen. It's more of a light pink thing. I know col color doesn't really mean anything. It's kind of unfair. I agree. Yeah, it does look really similar. It's incredible how symmetrical their like polyp tentacles are. Yeah, right. Like looking at the, the one base. on the left. So wild. From the center, they spiral yeah. out almost like at the same yeah. intervals. Yeah. That's like, nature seems to do that. Yeah. And not just organic, but inorganic as well, like crystal structure. Yeah. Little spider webs. mean to do that. That's pretty cool. Oh, there's a big bamboo. Oh, we have a big little garden here. Another one of those thick yellow stars. Oh, yeah. Do we want to see if there's dead stuff around him? It? Uh, yeah, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> Very thinking. Can we zoom in there, Dave? Are there two stars? Yeah, it looks like another or two. You know we're not seeing any of those fly trap anemones. Right. No. That's true. I wonder why. That does look like Yeah, a little bit of yeah. dead beneath it, yeah. Yeah. But overall, pretty happy corals here. Yeah, yeah. Despite the coral so the starfish livery. is not um, eating the coral. It looks like it is eating it. 
a wall. But there is a lot of healthy coral left. Right. Well, there may be two <laughs> sea stars eating them, but <laughs> despite this. I wonder if there's a uh, succession of predatory mm. stuff, like a, a star comes in, cleans off some Ooh, of the tissue, yeah. zoanthids come in, have oh. a place to land. And I've never really seen hydroids on coral in areas where there were still polyps. Yeah. Like, I've never seen it over a polyp, if that makes sense. Right, right. But have you seen it in areas where there is no polyps? Yeah, certainly. This move is complete, but we'll let you catch up to the ship before uh, continuing. Still cams looking a little bit um, too exposed. We have a question from chat. Do these corals have other natural predators other than starfish? Um, yeah, so starfish are one of the main coral predators, but we've also seen uh, anemones that right. seem to be feeding on the corals. Um, certain worms and mollusks as well. Um, what else? <laughs> Uh, the hydroids, I don't know if they're necessarily, they're not eating the coral, but they're sort of just fighting for space. Yeah. yeah. I think a lion would be, would, I mean, you never see them together, but a lion could probably take down one of these corals. Yeah, I would say if a lion and a coral lived in the same environment, they would for sure be a predator. <laughs> What's this one? Oh, that's a hydroid covered, or a zoanthid covered coral. I think, uh, yeah. Yeah, same thing with zoanthids. Zoanthids aren't eating the coral, but they're just taking over the space. Um, one of the benefits of corals is just the structure that they provide to ecosystems. Sometimes at the expense of the coral, but other times not. It provides a lot of natural habitat for things to um, hide from predators and to spawn and live and etc. So we started this dive around 2,400 meters and we're now at 1840 or so yeah so we've come up almost 600 meters probably not going to climb too much more i say as we climb <laughs> <laughs> Definitely density is picked up. Yeah. Yep. These ones, it's not like there's even skeleton remaining. It's just like they were fully like knocked off. So that makes me think it was less like predator related and more flow related. Mm -hmm. So on Cape Cod where I live, we don't have any really tall trees, so to speak, because it's very sandy soil, and once they get too tall, they kind of fall over. I wonder if corals have a uh, similar thing. Like, mm. these ones have pretty small holdfasts, but the giant yeah. uh, hemichoraliums we saw, the holdfast was, like, spread over the a long stretch of the yeah. rock. The small ones. Any of the small ones, Roger.
go away and forest out. Really? Forgot to press the button. Come on. Okay, can close them up. It might be my perspective, but the tether might be getting on to Herc. Yeah, it is. Wrapped around. Ooh, more of that sheet wobble. I am like completely down a dinosaur, like wormhole or something. <laughs> um, don't don't do anything just yet. I'm loving some of the technical comments we're getting in about um, that pterodactyls and marine rep reptiles aren't actually dinosaurs, and then the leave the fat off thing is referred to as shrink wrapping. Hmm. Yeah, I'm like reading. That what's so, so pterodactyls are part of pterosaurs, and what separates them from dinosaurs are their hip and arm bones. So all dinosaurs have a hole in their hip socket um, and a crest on their upper arm bone, and pterosaurs do not. Oh, cool. It's always so crazy to me that it really was just like some sort of mass extinction event, an impact event that killed off all the dinosaurs and that's why we're here. So One of those random chances. Yeah, like yeah. literally. I always think about what would happen like if all of a sudden another massive meteor would strike and we'd be gone, who would take over as the dominant life force? Yeah, I mean, there's a... Okay, <laughs> come up easy. I feel like it would be insects. Maybe. Cephalopods come up five meters in. Who knows? But I feel like even without a massive meteor strike, one day we will all be slaves to our cephalopod overlords. <laughs> no, that's the computers you're thinking about. <laughs> There's actually, but like thinking about a meteor strike, uh, I think like the thought is that science would be able to do something to prevent it or make it not as bad. Yeah, like sending some up Bruce Willis. Some sort of like intervention method, but then you kind of have to worry. Okay, uh, keep coming up there. Because it's like a, where it depends where it hits one. Yeah. It's like where it's pretty far spaced apart. So if it hits in one part of the world, like it might not yeah, affect no. the other part of the world. Oh, but it's oh, like, okay, so... You're heading to the north a little for me. If it's going to hit a part, you know, like the USA, like the U.S. would probably do something to prevent that. But if it's going to like hit did. another part of the world where maybe, like, the countries or the continents, like, don't have the ability to intervene, would another country intervene on their behalf? I would One. say we would have to, like, morally Well, okay, we but then the issue, so then the issue is that you intervene, the country intervenes, they, like, something happens, and a meteor goes into another country, then they have rights to... All the minerals. No, not all the minerals, to, like, if the U.S., like, does something, mm -hmm. then they could come back and, you know, like, not, like, sue U.S., but they could hold U.S. accountable, accountable. for, you know, trying to help, so... They actually do a lot of these, um, 
like mock things. Like, yeah, mock things uh -huh. where they try and figure out what would happen in these sorts of instances. And I think they're doing one this summer. At the geochemistry conference? No, this is something completely separate. Uh -huh. um, I don't know. I forgot where they're doing it, but I went to a AAAS conference, which is the Association for American Association for the Advancement of Science. And they're talking about like going to space and like the ethics of like space and stuff like that. Um, Ooh, so talk about a deep wormhole there. Yeah. So Try there was. Your head around to that's where I learned about this mock thing. So I think yeah, you know it's coming up this year, and or it might have already happened. In the Did you watch that movie? Um, it was on Netflix. Don't look up. It had Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh my gosh. No, I've been meaning to watch that movie for so long, but so it's... So long. It it's, is. It's like three and a half hours. I I wanted to watch it, but I was like, oh, right. I'm like waiting to watch uh, it with my parents. And then they didn't want to watch up. it, but then they watched it without me. It's like, okay, well, I'll watch it with this person. Well, they already watched it. So it's like, okay, I guess I have to watch it on my own, which is fine. I just haven't gotten around to it. I would say I watch it over multiple work. days. Okay. It is. Over multiple days. <laughs> it's a long movie. Three and a half hours. But it's really good. And it talks about the ethics and how sometimes... Yeah. Oh, <laughs> we might be so like involved okay, in our I own internal bickerings and politics that we allow the earth to just get trampled on. Uh, like bring theory. your head back around to the north. Leonardo, masterful in that movie. He is a very big proponent for environmentalism. Yes, yes, yes. Actually make it uh, northwest. Keep coming left, keep coming left. West. Oh, well, um, I'm reading more about the pterosaurs versus dinosaurs. Calling a pterosaur a dinosaur is an error of the same magnitude of saying that ours is a dinosaur. Just stretch it out, Brian. Here we'll probably wrap it around the uh, top. No, I would love to there. be. I would love to be like a sugar glider. So I'm okay with being <laughs> called a marsupial. <laughs> I think platypuses uh, are really bring cool. Bring your head a little more to the west for me. Just you bring your head to the west. You even have an online viewer who says that you definitely need to watch the movie. Okay. I definitely okay. will when I get uh, back to shore. Give me a second here. And, and I have and streaming capabilities. Yeah, once I get off the boat, I'm going to have like two hours to download a whole bunch of movies again really quickly for the plane ride back. All my movies are will be gone by then. I'll have watched them all. Wow, okay, yeah. Actually, pterosaurs and dinosaurs are really far apart in this, looking at a tree. I mean, I'm not a biologist, so I don't exactly know if this so is that far apart. Have to spin, Maybe it's not, but um, it looks far apart. Counterclockwise. Thanks, Smithsonian Magazine. <laughs> Fast as you can. Well, are there any dinosaurs that did fly? But I also think about dinosaurs like in the colloquial term, like even the big insects, I'll be like, those dinosaur yeah. insects. <laughs> those are some dinosaur fish. I know, because when I think of dinosaurs, I didn't. 
It's like the whole time period. Problematic thinking. Yeah, I wasn't really thinking. I'm just thinking of anything that's extinct. Not yeah, necessarily. mine is like anything that was in the Cretaceous time period is a dinosaur. Dinosaur, mammals, dinosaur, fish. I guess there were no yeah, flying yeah, dinosaurs. Okay, I hold searched that, up honey. flying dinosaurs and the first thing that comes up is birds. <laughs> yeah, like imagine someone drying a toucan. Mm -hmm. Like in this day and age, like that'd probably look pretty scary. And come to the west a little bit more again for me. Ooh, yeah. I think we're all good there. That's better. That's called wrapping your tether around the six eight. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't done that in a while. Oh, and then... Okay, let me come back down below you. Okay, so that's why dinosaurs and pterosaurs are different and why a pterodactyl isn't a dinosaur. But going back to the marine the marine thing, why they aren't, is because dinosaurs have to have lived on land. Actually, you can... Uh, why don't you come up a little like bit I still like my now. definition for dinosaurs <laughs> better. Oh, uh, wait, let me get... I need to get a little more closer to you. Stretched out here. And it has to be from the Mesozoic era. Come on, Hart. Come around. Isn't the Mesozoic include Jurassic, Cretaceous? Yep. Okay, you can, okay. you're going to have to come up. And it I have to drag me upper up. and lower. Uh, Cretaceous, upper, middle, and lower. Uh, Jurassic and Triassic. Okay. that for a minute. Maybe that'll be our question at the start of the watch for next shift. If you could be any dinosaur, what would it be? Okay. Pterosaurs are included. Pterosaurs and marine. And marine dinosaurs are included. What's your favorite Mesozoic? If you could be any you move organism uh, from 20 the meters Mesozoic. East, please. What would you be? Okay. Gonna have to think for a while for that one. Ooh. So there's an entire family of dinosaur birds that disappeared. Oh, there is flying dinosaurs then. Okay. What are they called? Uh, E N O. <laughs> nope, that's not it. And uh, uh, here we go. Okay, come up five meters. Their name means opposite bird. <laughs> I don't even know if I spelled that right. Thank you, all of our online viewers. You were telling me so much about dinosaurs. And who'd have thought that the whale fossil kicked it all off? That's good. All right. Uh, come on, Hart. Come on out. Oh, these guys look exactly like modern birds, but they're very different. Okay, I should be able to come up another five. Oh, this 
Spring Chorus was really cute. Yeah, yeah, I was just looking up one similar. Looks like little songbirds. Again, I have no idea if it's actually cute or not. <laughs> it could look like a booby, and I would hate it. Okay, back in the game. Back to deep sea science. Should bring your head uh, to the right, I think. You should see me. Back in the box. Nope. You can uh, come down five down and get a little slack. So right. back in the same kind of corals we've been seeing this whole time. Pair number of paragorgias, most of them with uh, zoanthid associates and brittle stars. Yep. Can we take a quickish zoom on that? All right. There. Okay, you can push in there, Joe. Yep, that's all I needed. Yep, there's a Caliphacus uh, glass sponge. So cool. be able to uh, come up five there. Oh, we're starting to see a lot more coral diversity. Yeah, we're really going to get into it just as it's time for watch change. Uh, I, I knew it was going to happen, but that's all right. We saw a possible cephalopod egg with cephalopod inside. Honestly, we've been able to see a lot of cool things on our watch. On our watch, yeah. I feel like all the other watches have not seen nearly as much cool stuff as yeah, us. Yeah, we are definitely getting all the highlights, so... I'm just glad we're not the 8 to 12 watch. Ooh, they do every single launch, it seems. Uh, no, the, it's the four, the 12 to 4 watch. They did the one last night, but it feels like every, like so many times they're launching between 8 and 12. No, they're not, because I was uh, sitting in for Adam yesterday. Yeah. And I was like, oh, is this your guys' first blue water watch? And they were like, yeah. They like didn't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, it's okay. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> I'll guide you through this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. He had that meeting. Mm -hmm. You sound so upset about it. Oh, no, mm -hmm. no, it was no. fine. I, like, so then when they relaunched, so then the 8 to 12 did have to do the yeah, launch again the launch. last night. I made a snide comment to Adam, like, have fun doing blue water, and he got really mad at me. And I was like, hey, like, I did part of your first blue water watch. <laughs> Pulling on you a little bit there. No, she's uh, moving the right direction. It'll come back around. When you get down there, I'd like to look at the sponge with the yellow crinoid. Right here. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. It looks like a a flower in a vase. Yeah, it's cute. Okay, Daryl, let's go uh, fly into him there.
I think the sponge is no longer alive, but it's held together relatively well for if it is no longer alive. But it's certainly playing host to several other types of life here. So I'm counting two brittle stars, crinoid. Oh, little squatty lobster. Yeah, and it's the gelatinous thing that I'm struggling yeah. with right now. If that's another type of sponge or if... It's another mysterious orb. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is, but I don't think I'm gonna. I don't think I'm gonna get any. I think it's a. Yeah, I'm not sure. That could be another type of sponge, or it could be a tunicate. Could be a couple things. I'm nice, just good, nice, good close-up of this uh, Camachula crinoid, though. All right, science is happy. All right. I'm excited we saw the predat or the possible predatory tunicate. Can we look at this lighter color one? I think it's just a white morph, but sure. uh, be, just be sure. in there a bit before I start. Yep, this just looks like one of the white paragorgias with thinner branches though. Might be a different species in the same genus. Alright, that's good enough, thank you. Okay, can go white, thanks. Some good images in the still cam. That still cam is amazing. Like, it's so beautiful. High resolution, everything. So, it's this is uh, bamboo coral that we're flying away from here. Got a couple others in the area. We've been seeing a fair number of them on this watch. Check out the sponge, please. Sure. Go ahead, Daryl. Push in a bit for us. Oh, that's another one of those beautiful sponges that looks like they were handmade from glass. Okay, hold on. Let me get up there a little closer. That's probably good enough for what I need. Okay.
Ooh, it's about that time for breakfast. I feel like this watch has gone by pretty fast after the first 30 minutes. Saw so many cool things. Those pro sinus, pro also sinus crinoids. Sorry, oh, sorry. Say again, Brian. No, I was just narrow. No, go ahead. Pass down. I don't need anything. Brian, did this fulfill your expectations of like coolness on one shift? It was okay. I, I definitely was hoping we would have gotten, it's getting there and I still think it will continue to get better. Um, but I was a little bit hoping we were gonna get close to where we were last time we were on this side of this feature two dives ago, um, even though we're a fair amount deeper about 700 meters deeper here than we saw those really, that awesome dive from a couple days ago. I don't know, I like this dive a lot. Like whale fossil, cool geology, cephalopod egg. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing the, the whale fossil on deck. Predatory tunicate, possibly. Well, we, yeah, I'm, I'm sure that's what it is now. We saw three or four more, and they, they look. I got a little bit better look at them. Yeah. And that's definitely uh, a type of predatory tunicate. Still, it's a different, um, it's a different species that I think I'm used to seeing, but uh -huh. it's definitely one of them. And what was that fancy word you said for pregnant? Uh, gravid. Gravid. Gravid predatory. And it may not have been gravid, it may have just, it may just been its gonads. But I don't actually remember anything about tunicate reproduction. She loved her. Good morning.
the deer chain. Watch change. some big rocks for you. Eight to twelve signing in. Test, test. Ooh, I can hear myself. <laughs> loud and clear. <laughs> can you hear me, Samantha? Yeah, unfortunately loud and clear, Adam. <laughs> oh. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. <laughs> okay, science. Are we doing waypoint seven? Uh, yes. <laughs> Great choice. Love that for us. Yeah, we're, um, we're just like at the top of the snow here. Big whip. And then we'll be in the Argus going up view. the terrace. Well, more little knolls. Yeah, the mesa, yes. The <laughs> tabletop. Um, yeah, so we can keep moving when uh, our RV's ready. This could be pretty cool. We're getting to the. the Great, let's get settled we're in. on this ridge, and we're about to head to the kind of All right. narrow top of it. You want to listen to SPL too? Uh, Your choice. He tries not <laughs> to. I yeah. didn't set it up though. That's, I don't know how he does it. He has the double muffs though. So, so he, he gets something different in each ear? <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> he just, he has the volume turned way down on the SPL. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah. It brings his own uh, headset. Yeah. Well, I have one too, but I can't stand it. Like, they're all too small. So it just squishes, or squishes my head. Or your or head uh, is too big. It, it is too big. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> So what are you pulling up? What? Off we go. Oh, I was waiting for the thumbs up. 
Oh, there it is. Okay, now we can go. <laughs> Bridge, no. Good morning. Three zero meters, zero nine five, please. It's like a bamboo skeleton with some associates. Can we zoom in, Dave? What is that paint? What are we looking at? Uh, is this is a dead bamboo coral? Um, Lots of oh, ophiroids actually, on it. maybe not bamboo. Uh, from a distance, the ophiroids looked like bands. I'm still assuming this is bamboo, honestly, with lots of um, brittle stars. Right. Why does it look stripped? And there's zoanthids and crinoids. Yeah. It looked stripped because there's no coral polyps. It's a dead colony. Yeah, it's bamboo. Um, what is this? That looks like zoanthid with its polyps retracted. I really? Wow. I think there's maybe even an anemone on here. Oh, and there's a, a sponge in the background. <laughs> A raw salad sponge in the background. Yeah, I see that. Or mm. is that an anemone? Or? That looks like an anemone. Interesting. What is going on there? Because that doesn't look like a zoanthid polyp to me. Hmm. Maybe they're all anemones. Looks like a zoanthid at the bottom, but not at the top. Actually, I'm not sure, so sure there is zoanthids now. <coughs> I think those are all... Anemones? Anemones. All right, we good with the spot? Yeah, we're good, thank you. Ship move underway. Well, thankfully, we don't have current this morning. Correct. Groundhog Day right. is finally over. Oh, good. <laughs> Sounded like this morning there was uh, a couple of gusty periods of wind, but those have also died down. So, knock on wood, things are different. So, I wonder if it is tidal. Huh? Does that put us in the cycle? Yeah, tidal. sure. Yeah, sure. Oh, sorry. I was. <laughs> <laughs> what? I was wow, talking that's to. Harsh. Talking. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't hear it. I was talking to the lounge. I'm talking to the lounge. I was just speculating. <laughs> <laughs> you zoom in, Dave. <laughs> Sam, Samantha, can we do a little uh, forecasting of when we might reach waypoint nine? Sure, we can do that. Uh, this looks like a bamboo to me. Ooh, great close up. Thank you. Adam, I'm guesstimating it's going to be the end of our watch. Um, each of these segments is uh, okay. 260 to 280 meters, and it usually takes us about two hours to do 200 meters with stops along the way. Okay, so halfway into the next watch? Because we got three of those segments. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so six hours, we'll say. You reading that down in the lounge, Dwight? That said, with uh, apparently the slope is not as interesting as it was anticipated, so I think the other group 
Or the other watch was going a little faster. Okay. Well, the, I, I'm anticipating this top of this to be maybe more interesting than the slope. So I think our normal pace is probably right. Um, Dwight, is there a reason to extend? Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I think I think the six, you know, whatever, call it recovery at, like, on deck at four, something like that. Okay. Oh, and we have a question from chat. Um, so how do you determine waypoints and what makes them a point of interest? Uh, Annie, can you put your mic a little closer to your mouth? Is this good? Yeah, that's great. Awesome. Okay. Uh, so waypoints are picked um, off of the kind of bathymetry that we've we've mapped for the area. So this right. is an area that we've newly mapped. And so based on the kind of terrain that we see on the seafloor, we pick waypoints and we, you know, try and we're always trying to move upslope or right. flat. That's the best way for the vehicle to move. We have an additional constraint of the direction that the weather is coming from at the surface and how, right. how the ship is best able to move. And so within those two constraints, we look for a variety of terrain features, you know, like flat areas, peaked areas, ridges, and work our way up to, to hopefully cross depth boundaries where different uh, organisms are are happy and and enough of the terrain that sampling the geology gives you a, a good integrated view of what the whole feature might look like. Awesome. Thank you so much. Looks like we have a whole lot of coral skeletons here. Mm -hmm. You don't think that one's alive there? Oh, there's... I think there could be a Chrysogorgia behind a coral skeleton, and uh -huh. then there's also a Hemicorallium. Or not Hemi, sorry, Paragorgia. Can we uh, zoom in, Dave? And it looks like there's something living in that Chrysogorgian. Oh, hang Ooh. on. Well, you know what? He's like, eh, I'm moving. <laughs> <laughs> this neighborhood's no good anymore. Whoa. <laughs> trying to get back on. I haven't really on. seen them move around that much. Yeah. This is cool. Oh. It's like it's what? dancing. Can we follow that Ophiroid for a while? Yeah, can bit? we look at the Ophiroid for a second? Yeah, I'm coming close there to that uh, that okay. ledge in the sonar. Yeah, and I'm gonna have to pull up. We're right. designing a ship move. Are we? Are we good? I'll, I'll just give. Is it trying to climb back on? No, I think it's what do you guys think? Hard to say. I think it's moving to a new location. Yeah, I, wonder I think if it's they moving on. Float like if they drift to a new spot, or if they. Crawl. Looks like it's going the crawling route. Okay. If we could go back to that Chrysogorgid, that would be amazing. Thank you. There's a whole lot living in there. What is that, a shrimp? A shrimp, the dark bellied shrimp. Mm. So delicate. Such a beautiful coral. Look at those hydroids. I'm good. Wow. Yeah, I think 
there's zoanthids and anemones. Yeah, yeah, because I, those don't look like zoanthids to me. Yeah. So I think we're right on the last one too. That's wild. All right, I think we're good. Yeah, good. Thank you. Robert, do you want to get ahead of Argus before yep. we? Uh, cool. Give you a minute. I can. Um, I can try. Okay. Roger. Can't control the back row. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Adam and let me talk to Lounge at the same time. Lounge, I'm just gonna put you on uh, SPL as well with a revised time estimate. Um, I miscalculated. It's we're usually doing about 200 meters an hour, so we've got um, two, four, six, about seven, 750. Uh, meters left to waypoint uh, waypoint nine. So we've got um, three and a half, let's say four hours to waypoint nine if we continue at a kind of normal speed. And then Dwight, when we're at um, waypoint nine, that's at 1820 meters and averaging 20 meters a minute, Robert, for an ascent-ish, let's say, um, that would be about 90 minutes to the surface. Look how they're all on the top. So, 200 meters an hour, you say? 200 meters an hour, yep. Okay. Uh, yeah, so maybe it's after lunch, right? We're looking at maybe oh, a, a 1 o'clock, 1.30, so something like that. Yeah, we've got 810 meters. Um, oh. So, yeah, about, about four hours. And... Uh, 20 meters a minute, so. Let's we'll just say two hours for recovery, not knowing. Yeah, sure, so. Uh, okay, so off bottom in four hours. Off bottom in four hours with hour and a half to two hours recovery time. Okay, I'll just call it for two o'clock, 2 p.m. Roger. Okay, let's zoom on that thing. Zoom in. I am not positive that there's living coral on that. Oh, oh, what is this, Swiftia? I think it's a dying Paragorgia. No, it's Paragorgia covered in zoanthids. Yeah. Wow. There's also a white stalk there at the bottom. Mm. Oh yeah, there's a bamboo behind it. Oh, Look at that. Yeah. good eye. Oh, hiding. <laughs> yeah, just the tips are still going on this. There's a lot going on there. I suppose zoanthids don't really need the coral to live. Mm. No, but they need some sort of structure. They got to let them get big enough before they take over. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Huh. All right, I'm happy on this. You good? Yeah, good. Thank you. Oh, Eritagorgia. Magnus Boralis. Are we happy for a move? Yeah, yeah. oh, okay. happy back here. Bridge, Nav. Let's do another three zero meters, bearing two zero nine five, please. Are we tilted up, Bob? There's a big hole in the light up there. Tilting down.
Chris Agorjan. Chrysogorgia, geniculata. Chrysogorgia, geniculata. <laughs> From Coral the Opera. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> that probably would be a sweet opera. I mean, there is a whole subgenre of rock operas. And rock operas. we have <laughs> a ukulele and a keyboard on board. <laughs> and a little bit of free time, we can... Sounds like a jam. Next weather day. You zoom in, Dave. There's also been history of making instruments out of XBT tubes, so we've mm. got unlimited supplies. This looks weird to me. That's also anthids. Oh, wow. 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 Including the cluster at the top right on the branch. Um, can we... I didn't see this top right. Hold on. I think so, yeah. I think so, yeah. So two different types. Looks like that ophiroid was guarding its territory. Wouldn't let any zoanthids sit there. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, um, scientists believe that that may be a way that brittle stars benefit corals is from preventing uh, things like zoanthids from settling. Hmm. Seems like we've already seen a lot more dead coral this dive. Yeah, yeah. With and without associates. I wonder why the associates have chosen like certain ones. Cause it seems like there's not much in the middle. It's either like a ton of associates or nothing. Yeah. Science, do we have any uh, biological uh, Sample. samples that we're looking for? Uh, I'm looking for a Rocks. Paragorgia Ooh. sample. Which color? Um, I don't think it's important. We already have a white Paragorgia. Um, so they got a pink one earlier this dive. They want a p Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, we're looking for unusual oh, stuff. Oh, and a, a bamboo. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Any? Anything unusual also. Okay. <laughs> Any geology samples we're looking for? Uh, no, I, I think we're we're pretty good. Might be nice to get one from the top of this ridge, but uh, I think we've got, got a bit so far. Great. Bless you. A stocked sponge. Looks like a euplectellate to me. Maybe Bellosoma.
Oh, interesting. So they they got a fossilized whale bone earlier. Yeah. What? Oh, cool. And I'm pretty sure we saw one earlier as well. They're they're like black, long, skinny things, like a stick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a thick, like a like one you would definitely pick up to throw for your dog. You know, it looks solid, like a mm -hmm. not like a twig. Mm -hmm. Where do you, where do you think we saw it? Uh, the beginning of the dive. I don't think we saw it. I think another watch saw it. They're like, "Hey, what's that?" And then they went back to look, and it was. They decided it was just a rock, but I think it was a whale bone. Interesting. All right, I think we're good on the sponge. Thank you. Is it just me, or is this like exact scene what we saw when we arrived at the seafloor last night? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's how it feels. That's how it feels. Different. Yeah. I thought we weren't. Uh, I mean, having look a at the pattern day. of of boat truoids there. It's clearly different. <laughs> clearly, clearly, boat truoids. Really? That's funny. You didn't mention any current last night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that another, another one. sponge? Another Blossoma? I think I saw a Chrysogorgia back there, too. That scene looks exactly the same, too. <laughs> oh, but with more associates. It looks like it's next to a uh, coral skeleton with associates. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, interesting. So anthids. Nothing on the sponges, though. Nope. It's probably pokey, you know, a little silica, I don't know, fibers getting in them. Actually, there's something poking out of it. Do you see that? Well, there's a little guy the in there. Backside? Yeah. A few right, maybe? Could be. It looks or a too shrimp. leggy. A hydroid. Oh no, anemone? I don't know. One <laughs> of those things. Let's just name every associate and eventually we'll get it right. I'd say hydroid, do you think? Yeah, just like the the little branching on the arms, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Cool. Thank you. And then we also have a question, in what depth can brittle stars survive? Obviously we see brittle stars, but has there been study of what depth can they not survive? I have seen them at all depths. Um, I don't know if there's a limit to their range. Right. I think it's probably not a pressure limit, but a food availability mm. limit. Interesting. But I wonder if they're in the, like the CCZ, Clarion Clipperton zone Bridge nodule up. fields at like 6,000 meters. That'd be interesting. Mm. So they're kind of like three zero meters, zero nine five, please. All, All the, the way, way down. down. <laughs> yeah. All the way down. Like a paragorgia. No. I don't think that's a paragorgia. I think it I is think that's covered a with zoanthids. I think it's a bamboo covered with brittle stars. This one? <laughs> oh. <laughs> There's only one way to settle <laughs> this. Yeah, then I think you're right. <laughs>
It is indeed Paragorgia covered in zoanthids. That's so crazy how they can completely take over. Right. All right, I think we got it. So zooanthids can take over a coral whether it's unhealthy or healthy. It just needs a... Yeah, it just needs something so to attach to. Right. So, okay. I mean, that may be the reason that a coral dies in some cases. It's because the zooanthids sort of take over. Bolosoma. What are the sponges we've seen on this? Uh, Bolosoma? Yeah. On this dive or in general? Yeah, on this dive. Just Bolosoma. Oh. Hey, stock crinoid. We missed you. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Anthemastus. Can we Where? look at that, please? Oh, left. Oh, oh middle left. One of my favorites. Why is it one of your favorites? They're just so funky looking. Really? Yeah, they're called mushroom corals. Mushroom When the polyps corals. are attracted, they look like little mushrooms. Hello. <laughs> Isn't that so cool? Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> so does that have a oh, wow. skeleton inside the base? Um, no comment. OK. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think they're like cup corals. Yeah, I don't think so either. I mean, if it were a skeleton, it would be, like, pertinacious. Yeah, I also believe that we've slurped them before. Mm. No. <laughs> that is so... Why does it say it like that? What? <laughs> to the point. To the point. All right. Time. <laughs> the screen just I thought says it was gonna no give you like really a, big. A big article about why. <laughs> no. So there's something, yeah. Chat looks says like a they're soft corals. Oh, little little amphibod? Oh. Or isopod? Isopod? Yeah. Isopod? Mm -hmm. Iso oh, it's moving. Hello. Cool. Yep. So apparently they don't even have small pieces of sclerite. Oh, and because of this, they do not have any fossil records. Oh. Wow. That is so crazy. Well, there's some soft-bodied things that get preserved. Huh. Oh, what's that? Oh, zoom, zoom. Do I that? No, I think a regular anemone. Maybe that's not a anemone. What is what that? that? What no, it's is like that? A, a soft coral, maybe. It looks like what? another mushroom. kind of 
mushroom yeah. coral. The polyps With the poly Right, right. But not... I haven't seen this before. Uh, this is, hey, yeah. I wonder who the polyps look like that. Are they retracted? They're retracted. That's definitely a soft coral, but not one I've seen either. What? Very long stalk. I feel like we couldn't get it without the slurp. Unfortunately, uh, Dan just called in from the lounge yeah, and heard. the slurp, yeah, yeah, slurp is not working. Yeah. Yeah, no slurp. Uh, Any um, possible ID? Is it the same? I've never seen this. Can we get like some really good close-ups since I can't sample? Yeah, the ship's holding its position here. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think you have to do them manually, yeah? Yeah. Honestly, these aren't coming up that great. That looks so yeah. weird. Grab another. Ooh. Robert, I'm going to put you on SPL. Okay, that was pretty good. You got it? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Thank you. It was a uh, chat suggested heteropolypus. Hmm. Oh. Polypus. Maybe. Could be. I feel like it looked a little bit different. Yeah, but a bit of a thicker stalk. Yeah. Samantha, where are we in a ship move? We're uh, stopped right now. So if you want to look around at anything else, we're just, nah. I'm waiting for Herc to get a little farther ahead of Argus before putting in another move. Okay. Atalanta, not Argus. It's very hard to do that. Yeah. Adam, was there anything you wanted to do here? Nope. Roger. Another Uplex Island. Uh, I think it looks Good for We're approaching a very big. Yeah, right. Coral Hold on. Structure. Let's get a look at this Bridge coral. Now. Whoa. I think it's a bamboo. It looks like three zero meters zero nine five. Please zoom in, Dave. make of that one. That's a bamboo. Lots of living polyps actually. What type of bamboo did you want to sample? Um really any. Actually I'd I'd kinda like a um unbranched great bamboo. There's one that we've seen a lot of that I would like. Okay. Keep the ship move then.
We're getting a little bit more current over the top here. Yeah, we're just coming up to the top. Nothing like this morning, though. Or yet last night. <laughs> <never that> one. <laughs> we're in this morning right now. <laughs> <laughs> that is now. Dave, we're getting a little blown out on the lights here. Thank you. Today. So are zoanthids mobile? Um they So like they, when like this when one they... falls over, do these mm -hmm. zoanthids die or do they move to a new coral die yeah they the like larvae will settle on on something mm -hmm. and then that's how they land up here so it'll basically spend its life on that one coral yeah Large bamboo. Big bamboo. Hmm. Let me zoom in on that. Oh, look at that pretty crinoid on the end. So pretty. Do people call crinoids colloquially feather stars? Mm -hmm. You know what? If we could get a sample here, that would be great. Rudder. Bridge nav. Hold position, please. I love that purple crinoid. It's beautiful. Yeah. So pretty. <laughs> I'm curious about the purple crinoid that looks like its frond arms are fading. I've seen that coloring before, the half purple. Really? Half you think it's pink. Yeah, I think it's healthy but just colored differently or Yeah, there, uh -huh. and there's another one around the backside. I think it has the same coloring. Oh. Paolo, can you show me what we have for basket yeah, space? Of course. So mainly it's this area. Yeah, ACD. ACDC. <laughs> oh, the sharks are coming. Yeah, the porch is full up. Do they have a rock on top of the scoop? <laughs> so apparently they lost the plate somehow. Huh. 
Oh, I see. So these are ballast trucks. Still cam on, or y'all need a uh, post it? <laughs> <laughs> I can use backups. Yeah. Do you need more post its? Yeah. Sometimes still cam just doesn't do as good of a job as I can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta submit these as part of the official data record. <laughs> the front bio box is all full up, so oh. we have to go around to the so side. They made a little fish. <laughs> <laughs> Did you 3D print that, Paula? <laughs> <laughs> no, but Google helped me <laughs> make the origami piece. Thank you, Paula, for the first uh, 3D model submitted to the art gallery, <laughs> the sample art gallery. Was there anything awesome. added last night? Oh, there was a lot added last night. I was really? to view the gallery after the watch, yeah. I can't wait. Whoop. How much of this are we going for? Uh, just a snippet. Five inches. So, you know, it's going to be somewhat floaty, so mm. more is better, really. For okay. Oh, okay. As far as, like, keeping it in the box. But Alrighty. I don't know. Yeah, because we're going to have to open this box again that we put it in. Yeah. So. You want at least one branching node? Yeah, that would be good. If I could get... Um, you got any particular place in mind on here? So I'm seeing like this. Yeah, that looks good to me. Can you zoom in, Dave? I, I think right here. What? That one doesn't have a branch, though. Oh, that's true. Okay, hold on. Where do you see it? Uh... <laughs> Can you go a little bit left-ish? The camera or with the arm? The camera. I'm looking for a small ish piece that branches. Okay, so on the left over here, oh. if we could get a snippet. Oh, that seems that might be out of reach. Really? Well, okay. I can reposition. It's just, I'm not if you could get oh. this, that would be perfect. I think we're all right. Just out of reach. <laughs> oh, sorry. Well, I can reposition. It's not a big deal. Okay. Hey, Joel. So, how do you determine what's a sample? like what part to get? Um, well, on bamboos, there are um, nodal and internodal branching coral. Um, and the way that they branch 
and whether they're nodal or internodal can help to determine the species. So for this particular coral, we want to include some branching. Okay. Yep. Can you define um, nodal versus internodal? Yeah, so nodes on a bamboo coral um, are these protein bands, dark bands that are characteristic of these corals. Um, so corals that branch on these nodes are nodal. Uh, corals that branch between them are internodal. Awesome, thank you so much. Yeah. at the end of the reach. Stop it. Can we zoom in, Dave? Yeah, it's a very stringy anemone back there, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that an anemone? I have no idea. I'd love to look at it after. Nice. Nice. Cool. That's a great sample. It's like Hercules brought us flowers. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Herc. You should know. Change order sample. to kill a thruster too. Which ones are going in? We have A, C, D, and E box available. Not B. Not B and not F. Okay. I think it's going to fit in here. Maybe. Hmm. 
we need to flip it over. Right? You want to go in E? Yeah, maybe maybe that'd be better. Okay. Nice. Paula, confirming this is 068? Yep, 068. Great, thank you. Before we hop too far away here, there's a little something here I, we'd like to look at. Roger, ship will remain stopped. That's brilliant, TJ. Great stuff. Wow. Okay, what are we looking at? Uh, it's There's something back here. Is this one in the foreground or further? It's a little thing on the on the sand, nemony or of some sort, maybe. Wow, it's oh, a really see. large coral in the background. Yeah, we're getting to the top of this ridge. We think we should find some good stuff. Different than that? the ones we've seen. Oh. Similar color, but. So cool. Okay. Thank you. Would you like to get ahead of Argus or Atalanta before uh, we move forward? All right. That was a question. Yeah. Okay.
Happy? Bridge nav. <laughs> Three zero meters, zero nine five, please. Then we have a question. Um, do you typically find many hydrozoans on your explorations? Um, yes. Okay, why, why is that? Is it, um, can you explain what hydrozoans are for our Yeah, um, sorry, give me a second. So hydrozoans, like hydroids, um, we find them in a lot of dead coral skeletons. Oh. So they will often colonize those skeletons and they have stinging cells and they'll sort of move along the branches. Okay. We um, saw an epic solitary hydrozoan we saw a really that cool looked one. like a, a you know, had like a little brain in the middle of it. The what? sunflower kind of, it was really cool. It was yeah, it was neat. That was on the Bolosoma sponge, right? So what do we expect to see um, the higher we go in elevation? Um, Probably denser denser aggregations for one because there's yeah. just greater food supply um i would i would ex i would expect more biodiversity, biodiversity with increased right. flow is this is this some um, expected it's um at this depth we've been seeing a lot of um skeletons mm -hmm. of corals is this what we expected to see at this depth or because there there is some life yeah, yeah. sure I don't know that I expected to see as many skeletons, but it just means that things have been living here for a long time. Right. And it supports some amount of life, but... Um, it does look like that. <laughs> not a ton. Yeah, there seem to be aggregations of coral skeletons in different places, and I don't know that I have an answer for why that is. Right. Um, that'd be a really interesting research question. But yeah, um, I mean, a lot of these are very old coral. So it also makes sense that you would have a lot of skeletons because they've been here for a very long time. And this bit of seafloor has been here for much longer than right, any that's true. coral can live. So but I guess it's one question is how long do the skeletons last? That is a good question. That is a good question, right. So we are at the top of this uh, this feature here. Oh. We've got a little more elevation um, to climb to get to 8.7, but we're, we're pretty much there. We may find that there's, that the top is you know, not like a peak, but maybe a bunch of boulders and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So we maybe we'll have mm -hmm. some good boulders of life. <laughs> Ooh, what was that? Floater. Are we looking at rock sampling this dive? I think we're maybe looking at one more rock sample for the rest of the dive. You know, we're kind of at the top uh, and should be similar across here I mean, only if we see something unusual geologically would we collect more you said unusual and like how would you define something unusual geologically well here it's really just by looks so something that's different you know we don't see the actual rock that makes up this feature we see just the crust on top of it um, so you're kind of sampling blind a little bit, but if we saw, uh, you know, some columnar basalts, which we talked about before, right. uh, we might see if there's something from there to sample, or if we see uh, some anything that looks just different at this at this stage.
And this is from chat. Oh, you guys are gonna look at this? No. Um, is it hard to find a job as a marine biologist or generally a job studying and exploring the sea? I'm going to take it further. In your own profession, what challenges do you guys face to get to where you are? For people who want to pursue a job in your field. I think that connections are really important. Right. Um, it can be hard to go out there and, and submit a bunch of applications and, and not hear back. It can be really discouraging. Um, you should also be prepared to hear no a lot. That's totally normal. Right. And um, yeah, I mean, just getting involved in any way you can um, is really helpful. I mean, if there's a lab that you want to work in, talk to the PI, like ask people questions. Yeah, I probably should acknowledge the kind of incredible privilege that I had, you know, in order to reach this spot, you know, being a, a white male, upper middle class, like had opportunities that a lot of other people didn't and things I could do that, you know, financially other people couldn't probably. Um, but I think that the kind of one of the best qualities is, as Jules said, kind of enthusiasm. Um, people who want to be a part of this and and are willing to work hard i mean you do have to you know you have to pay attention to your studies you have to right you know get good grades and take take good classes and whatnot but uh but i think the cool thing is that you know for marine biology or geology or anything else that there's a lot of skills that people that you can develop that are really helpful to it you know whether it's whether you're into coding or 3d modeling or videography or right. or whatever They're, those are skills that are in high demand in this field so yeah um i think one of the main challenges that i faced was lack of orientation back in mm. Puerto Rico there's just <laughs> very little resources even at college to be able to get into this kind of environment and this field so I googled a lot and I researched a lot of the opportunities so there's a lot you can find online and even I remember googling what is oceanography <laughs> in my <laughs> sophomore year <laughs> so yeah. self taught <laughs> yeah and yeah I guess it's very rare, but um, people sometimes, a lot of professors, some, honestly, still hold to some. Um, since I'm Hispanic, I've, I've done exchanges back in the States, and oh. I've had to work extra just to prove that can I have you, to be there. And in, they've even given me more work um, compared to my other cohort, cohort, I guess. So it's very rare, but still happens, and I guess that's one of the challenges. There? I face too, but it can be discouraging, but then you may like, She's it's just one person compared Sorry. to the other 20 person in the right. room that are really encouraging you to continue in this field and helping you. So yeah, this, some of the challenges are there, but it's not impossible. It's definitely like I'm here, the opportunities like this does exist. Thank you. We're looking at this one. Look at that. Uh, oh, wow. A, a it's just beefy. Very beefy. <laughs> <laughs> What's it doing up there? I don't know. It could be feeding. Oh, look. There's a bunch of bare skeleton up to kind of where it is. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder who did that. Bridge, Nav. Let's do three zero meter or zero nine five, please. On the sonar displays is is Atalanta on the left? Yeah. Correct. Okay.
Annie, we didn't hear about you in the question. Oh, oh. Um, <laughs> actually, so the challenges, um, I do relate to you, Paula. Um, in the classes that I've taken, I was, I think it was me and my sister, we, were the, we would be the only two Samoans there. So we also had to work very hard just to be in a marine science class. But also back home, there's, you know, coming from a small island, there's so many limited resources. So we would have to um, go out of the island or off the rock uh, to seek these opportunities. Um, but like you said, I do agree, it's not impossible. Um, I'm really grateful just to be here and um, yeah, just to learn and grow and to pass these this on to our generation back home um yeah so i do agree i am i yeah um i would love to are we gonna look at this one yeah, we, yeah i think we're yeah. zooming in on Let's it look at it Bamboo. Uh, zoom in dave oh we got some stuff in the background too oh What's and that? uh umbrella pathies oh. yeah i wonder Wow, yeah, there's a lot of density. 